Greetings super friends, Jonathan Levy, and stick around because in this video, I'm going to share with you the essential components of a healthy nighttime routine. Hey there, super friends. You know, if you are a fan of personal development and life hacking and biohacking the way that I am, you've probably heard so much about morning routines. It seems like everyone has a morning routine and everyone wants to talk about the importance of morning routines. But the fact of the matter is, I have personally found, and you can quote me on this, that a good day starts the night before. And so while having a really great morning routine is super important, and I've talked about it at length, and I definitely don't want to discount the importance of morning routines, the truth of the matter is, is that if you blow your evening routine and you don't do all the things you need to get a good night's sleep, well then you've already lost the day after. Now this is especially true for those of you like me who sometimes suffer from depression or anxiety or the blues or lethargy. You know that a good night's sleep is an absolute essential if you want to do well the next day. So why don't people talk more about evening routines? Well, I think it is this idea that you can start a clean slate the next day before. But the truth of the matter is, all the reasons that make morning routines important and great and valuable are the same way and they're equally true of evening routines. This idea of being able to anchor to an event that happens every single day, the kind of cue habit response of habit building, is equally true of evening routines. And although you don't necessarily have this kind of nice buffer end cap unless you've enforced a very clear go to bed schedule, I do find that you can build a lot of consistency and create very strong habits around a bedtime routine. So after interviewing over 275 of the world's top superhumans and asking a lot of them about their bedtime routines and then testing them for myself over the last nearly decade, which are the ones that have actually stuck with me and which are the ones that I've completely adhered to and found valuable enough to do every single day. Now, of course, I don't do them every single day. I am also human, but out of the hundreds of different things that I've tried over the years, there are just a handful of things that have stood out to me and have stood the test of time. Now, the first thing is taking supplements before bed. Now, I don't know about you, but I take a lot of various different supplements from my omega-3 to ashwagandha root to creatine, a multivitamin, and all this other stuff. And I found that when I used to take it in the morning, it was a real problem if I wanted to do intermittent fasting because you either have to not take those because you don't have the cue to generate the habit because you're taking all of these supplements on an empty stomach. It is not pleasant. I have felt very, very sick in the past. So what I started doing is shifting my supplement intake to the evening. And what was great about this is it allowed me to add different supplements that are evening specific. So for example, I'll often drink a cup of bedtime tea. I will often take some valerian root, which will help me sleep, or even magnesium before bed, which helps me wind down. And I found that taking my supplements before bed is a lot easier to enforce and generally leaves me without that terrible, disgusting queasiness and wanting to throw up that I often got when I took pills on, a, on an empty stomach. Now, I don't know if there's an effect on the absorption that I'm sitting with those in my body and not peeing for up to eight hours, but I imagine it cannot hurt the absorption either. All right, the next item on my bedtime routine, or I should say evening routine, is a really, really important one, and it is a screen curfew. Now, so many of us, I've talked about this in prior videos, videos on why you sleep poorly and videos on blue light. So many of us take our phones into bed with us. We have a TV in the bedroom. We bring the iPad to bed to do some reading. But the fact of the matter is we all know those screens, even if they have the blue light blocking feature, even if we're using these blue blocking glasses, they still are impacting your sleep because they're stimulating you and there's new information coming in and it's exciting and you're texting and you're not paying attention at the time. All that has to stop. What you wanna do is create a bedtime ritual, right? And the most important part of that ritual is turning off the day, turning off the working problem solving mind. So one of the first things I do to start my routine is I close the computer and I disconnect from screens. Now, sometimes I might watch TV with my wife for a while, but at a certain point in the evening, it is all screens off. What we'll do is we'll keep our phones out of the bedroom. We don't read on iPads. We don't have a TV in the bedroom. And so once I come into my bedroom, 
I'm there for one thing, which is to wind down and eventually fall asleep. Now that is a nice segue into another bedtime ritual, which is putting on blue blocker glasses. I've talked about this in a lot of different videos and done some various podcast episodes with folks who make blue blocker glasses. If you wanna know more about why those are important, check it out. They're not sexy, but adding this little element to your bedtime routine is going to dramatically, dramatically help you wind down and sleep a whole lot better. Now, once I've gone into the bedroom, I wanna continue my nighttime wind down routine. And one of the best ways it's actually been discovered to bring your body down and start to create that feeling of drowsiness is actually to cool your core temperature. Now, there are a lot of ways you can do this. You can sit with your shirt off under the air conditioner. You can take a cold shower. Believe it or not, a cold shower will actually bring your body temperature down and instead of waking you up, it's actually gonna put you asleep, which is why they actually find that people who freeze to death fall asleep before they actually die. Now, that's a very, very morbid thing, but the fact of the matter is a cold shower will actually calm you down. What's interesting is that a hot shower will actually do the same thing. A hot shower will bring your blood to the surface of your skin, and assuming that it is a little bit colder outside, if you're in 110 degree Fahrenheit heat, this might not work, but once your blood rises to the surface of your skin, it actually will cool down and again, bring your core temperature down. So if you're not keen to the cold showers as I am, then you can take a warm shower. And of course, do your hygiene routine. I'm not gonna touch on hygiene routine and if you should brush and floss, you should, but you can do that and you can do your cold shower while you're brushing your teeth or whatever it may be. And you will find also an added benefit is that when you feel clean and when you get into clean sheets that haven't had many, many days accumulated sweat, you will feel a lot more relaxed. And this is one of the reasons why we sleep so well in hotel beds because the sheets are always fresh pressed and clean. All right, let's talk about the next one. You're all clean, your body temperature is cool, you're ready, your teeth are brushed, you haven't been on screens for a few hours. Well, the next thing I do is read in bed. Now, if you wanna know how I'm handling this, given the fact that I'm limiting blue light exposure, I have two tips for you. One is that I am using red light if I wanna read with a paper book. You can probably see back there, I have one of these really cool Hue Go Philips devices that can give me red light. And I've put it above the bed so I can turn it on. I can tell she who will not be named, give me red light on Hue Go. And then I can just read with red light. I don't have to worry so much about blue light exposure. Now, what about my Kindle super friends out there? Well, that is why I wear these for hours before bed. It's not perfect. I know that having an electronic device in the bedroom, especially one that is technically emitting blue light is not perfect, but for me, the amount of reading that I do as a speed reading instructor, you can imagine uh, it would be quite a bit for me to lug books around. So I do read on the Kindle before bed. I try to bring the light down as much as possible and I wear very, very dark blue blockers to read with that Kindle device. Now, why is reading important before bed? Well, Tim Ferriss has talked about this a lot, but the idea is you want to disconnect your mind from the day's problem. So do I read business books in bed? No, I do not. Oftentimes I will read fiction or other kinds of books that have a little bit less problem solving and a little bit less intensive thinking involved. Uh, classic fiction works really, really well for me. Sometimes what I'll even do if you wanna move your reading list forward and you wanna actually make progress on all the self-help and personal development books that you want to read is I will give myself 20 minutes to read personal development, self-help, or even business books and then I will transition. Another nice thing about the Kindle is it's a few taps and then I'm reading some classic fiction or even new fiction, historical fiction, something that is allowing me to disconnect from me and my day and all the things that happen to me so that by the time I do turn out the light and put my head on the pillow, I am completely ready to go to bed. All right, one last one now that you're in bed. The last thing that I do before I fall asleep every single night is I ground myself. Now, if you haven't heard about grounding or earthing, it's this idea that you want to ground your body as if you were walking barefoot on the earth. You know, when we were evolving, we didn't have Nikes that were rubber sold and we were releasing electrical charges from our body into the ground. This sounds really, really woo woo. It sounds completely ridiculous. And yet 
the person who recommended one of these grounding earthing mats to me was actually a molecular and cellular biologist, MD, PhD friend of mine. I picked one up from GroundSmart, and I have to say I actually sleep a lot better with this thing under my feet. So I don't know if it's placebo or not, but I do know that I have less anxiety and less tension in my body when I seem to either walk barefoot outside or sleep with one of these under my feet. So I thought that might be a valuable one for all of you who are feeling really tense in the bedroom or in bed. So that's my list of must have bedtime routine items. I would love to hear what are some of the things that you have to do before you go to bed to get a good night's sleep. Let me know in the comments or make sure to like and subscribe depending on where you are watching this video. You might also want to follow or heart or whatever it may be. I love to see your comments. I love to see your feedback and I really hope that you get a great night's sleep tonight. Take care, everyone.